Hey everyone, Jeffrey here from Fairview Bible Church, and we are continuing our devotional series through the book of Psalms. And this week we're going to be looking at Psalm 14. So either listen along or grab your Bibles and follow along, but let's get into God's word today and let's see what he has to say. Psalm 14, to the choir master of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they do abominable deeds, there is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in great terror, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You would shame the plans of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. We start off this psalm with the recognition of it is the fool who says in his heart, there is no God. Now this is not a foolishness that we are to point and laugh at. This is a foolishness that is a moral judgment from their creator and should be heartbreaking for those of us who have been graciously saved by that creator. Speaking of foolishness, Proverbs 26.4 says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18, we read, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. And this suppression is showing that there is an active denial and suppression of the truth that is evident around us, that there is a creator. Now as we hop back into Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3 are very interesting because they're actually quoted in the Epistle of Romans, chapter 3, by the Apostle Paul. And in it, he is showing that there is a universal depravity and sin that we all share in our fallen ancestor of Adam. That none of us are able to do good outside of God, but it is him who empowers us to do the works that he sees fit. And as we read on in verse 6, it's very interesting because in verses 4 and 5, we'll see they, there they are in great terror. And we see that third person calling. But in verse 6, David writes, you would shame the plans of the poor. And it turns into that second person narrative that becomes a face-to-face -face confrontation of our own sin and the judgment that our righteous God has for the lives that we live. But the great news is what follows at the end of verse 6. But the Lord is his refuge. And in this context, David is using God's personal covenant name for his people, and it shows how deep the connection is with us that overcomes the depths of our sin. That no matter how sinful we are or have been, God's grace is deeper, his love is stronger, and he can ransom us from those chains. He is an unchanging refuge in this life of turmoil. And it calls into um, thought here as we live out the great commission of the Lord Jesus at his ascension, that there is no neutral ground. When we witness and when we share the gospel, we don't answer the fool according to his folly. Jesus is Lord, and it's the foolish who suppress that truth. The great news of the gospel is that though one day every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, through the power of the gospel, by the grace of God, his spirit is able to remove our heart of stone, replace it with a heart of flesh, and allow us to live in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's meditate on that this week as we continue to read through Psalm 14 and see what God is saying to us. May God be your refuge.